The lights are on. The popcorn is popping. You can almost smell it. And the projectors are running. The movies on the big screen are back. And it looks like blockbuster films that were put on hold because of the pandemic, they're going to be released this year. So what can we expect to see? For the answer to that question and more questions, we turn to film critic and founder of Revival House Theater, Mr. Rob Rector. How are you, Rob? Good to be with you all again, even in a virtual setting. Yes, <laughs> it's wonderful definitely. to see you. How we've are you? you? We've missed you desperately. It's, it's great to. So let me ask you real quick: uh, uh, Is 2022 looking like a blockbuster year? So I think there's a lot of probably copying and pasting we could have done from last year's segment and put it onto this one because a lot of those that were slated for last year have now been pushed to this year. So that means kind of double the blockbusters this year. So, you know, there's there's a heavy plate for whatever genre of film you're interested in. There's going to be multiple uh, options for you out there in the theater. Yeah, and it looks and like... Home. And home, yes, yes. And it looks like there are going to be a lot of sequels. In fact, most of what we're talking about are sequels. Yeah, yeah, there's there's a trend, and it was this, I heard this phrase that was coined, it was called a legacy sequel. And like a legacy sequel, meaning like Ghostbusters Afterlife, where you have the originals, but then you, you kind of usher in a new generation of there. And I think a lot of these kind of fall under that same kind of, the same kind of um, title as a legacy sequel. So, all right. Well, let's let's talk specifics. Uh, what are your thoughts on Scream? <laughs> you should never say who's there. Don't you watch scary movies? So this is again talking about legacy sequel. This has a number of the returning. Uh, four or members, founding members of the Scream family. So you have Nev Campbell, you've got Courtney Cox, David Arquette, who are reprising their roles. But there's also a new group of teens that are going to be stalked by it. And and like Halloween did, instead of calling it, you know, the, the Halloween two, three, four, five, six, they just decided to keep it simple and call it Scream all over again. So <laughs> but not, no, they called it Scream, comma, all over again. Yeah. <laughs> so... And I imagine, I imagine th this one is the same situation because they added the word the to it. So we have the Batman. This is another one that I'm excited about. Yes, uh, Robert Pattinson takes over the role of the titular superhero. And so it's got a great cast of uh, Zoe Kravitz is Catwoman, Colin Farrell is Penguin. Um, so, you know, there's, there's some familiarity to it, but it doesn't have any relation to the Christopher Nolan trilogy that came out a, a decade or so ago. But uh, but looking forward to it, this is a kind of a darker turn on the, uh, the DC legacy, yes. Oh. Mm. So it's still gonna say, I'm the Batman. Anyway, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, what, what are your thoughts on Legally exactly. Blonde Three? Yeah. That was good. Yeah, yeah. I've been working on that one. That's it. Legally Blonde Three. What do you think? That was really good. <laughs> yeah, Legally Blonde Three. You know, this one is again talk about a, a legacy sequel where where uh, Reese Witherspoon reprises a role that kind of jettisoned her to to stardom, and now we catch up with Ellie Woods. All these years later, where she's a practicing attorney, uh, hijinks ensue. But uh, you know, I'm anything with with Reese Witherspoon. I'm I'm, I'm down to see because she just has a really great presence on the yeah. screen. So so it's exciting to see her kind of revisit this this one role that kind of made her the star that she is today. Yeah. And I imagine the wardrobe is going to be just as hot too. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> All right, Rob, well, we're not done. We still have a lot to cover with you. We also want to hear what's going on with Revival House. So we're going to do that next. So sit tight. We'll be right back. Get comfy and get cozy because the conversation on Blockbusters continues and we are back with film critic and founder of Revival House Theater in Milton, Rob Rector. And you had mentioned uh, before the break that it's almost like cut and paste. I remember it was about a year ago, we were all excited about the Top Gun Maverick coming out and of course it didn't. Is it coming out this year? Uh, let's hope this is a year we go into the danger zone. Oh. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, and we'll get a double dose of Tom Cruise this year. Not only do we have Top Gun Maverick, which is his long-awaited sequel, but we also have another long-awaited sequel with Mission Impossible 7. 7? Seven. Seven. He's made seven of these, I know. And they're good. They're still good. So huh. anyway, yes, Top Gun Maverick um, has Jennifer Connelly is, uh, is the love interest, I believe, in this one, Ed Harris. Uh, and I believe Val Kilmer is going to return as the Iceman. Oh, uh, that's exciting. So what are your thoughts on uh, Avatar 2? <laughs> Avatar 2. So this one has been, what, 10 years in the making? Um, he was waiting for computer technology to kind of catch up to, to what his vision was. And all I can say is that I hope we like it because he has, I believe, four of these in the works so oh. this is one of four more that are supposed to come out so i really hope that this does well for him because uh he's got a lot riding on this oh, but yeah i never underestimate never underestimate uh the director james cameron i mean every time you think oh well i'm gonna remake the titanic and and put that on a boat and it's gonna be the biggest box office uh blockbuster in history you know you never would have thought that and then and then he continues to to exceed our expectations yeah absolutely okay uh this is one my husband is excited about downton abbey a new era yes yes uh so this one uh takes place um in a nightclub um and no, i'm just kidding it's uh, <laughs> it's still downton abbey but it's a new generation um uh, you know it's <laughs> downton abbey electric boogaloo so this is <laughs> uh you know it's got some of the same characters uh for the original but there's a new director um same writer though so there's going to be some consistency with it as well too following the uh the historical drama film that was released in 2019 i believe wow. so so look for the further adventures of the downton abbey legacy so so uh, you you've been talking about legacy sequels uh, and, and I get all that, and I understand all that, but there's some originals coming out, too. Yeah, yeah, we've got a, a, a number of originals on there that I'm kind of looking forward to. There's one in particular uh, called The Unbearable the Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, where Nicolas Cage plays Nicolas Cage, <laughs> and a fictional version of him, but he's hired by this, this guy, paid by uh, Pedro Pascal, who was in Wonder Woman 1984, and hires him to come and and celebrate his birthday in Spain, but he gets caught up in in all these espionage thrills <laughs> that he's supposed to recreate the same characters he's played on screen for all these decades. And it looks funny, it looks weird, it looks exciting. So, and I, I'm down for Nicolas Cage, whatever he does, because he's just a madman. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So uh, we we wanted to talk a little bit about Revival House. What's going on with that? So Revival House, obviously, you know, COVID's had its um, fingerprints all over us. So this past summer, we did a very successful um, Jurassic Fest, which was the uh, uh, successor to Jaws Fest, which was a big fundraiser that we did out in the field in in um, in Milton. And uh, this next summer, we've been invited to return. Uh, and all I can say is that we have been uh we've been focusing on on blockbusters to show on a big 55 foot inflatable screen out there uh at hudson fields and uh i can promise you that there it, it you know uh, again covid dependent uh that we were going to have uh one of my all-time favorite blockbusters this summer can't say it yet Oh, but I'm mm. definitely looking forward to it. <laughs> I have right. to have a reason gonna, to come back. I yeah, have to have a reason to come we're back. just going to have to uh, have you back. Okay, so I'm getting told I need to wrap, but Rob, I have, uh, I'm have. i going to give you five seconds to answer this question. Uh, being the Ricardos, did Nicole Kidman nail it or not? Oh, absolutely. I think she did. There's yeah. no, I, I, I loved it. I, I mean, that was, uh, it wasn't an impersonation. She, she actually, I mean, she actually seemed like she was channeling Lucia Ball, in yeah. my opinion. My opinion, too. I, I had my doubts, but I just wanted to hear from someone who knew a little bit better than me. Thank you so much, Rob well, Rector. I, he's not here, so I'll have to ask, you know, you'll have to ask me. <laughs>